guys it's Mia here welcome or welcome back to my channel today is May 7th it's the last day of school and I am so happy it's not the last day of school forever though it's the last day of my freshman year of college but still since I never made a first day of college video I want to make this video to tell you guys about my whole experience and to give you guys advice for when you guys go to college or if you're in college already ignore my nose I got sunburned and I peeled it and I had my glasses on so now it's red but before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe even though I'm done school, my mom's not done work and she's at a meeting right now. So I'm in my car and it's hot, but we'll get through it. Before I tell you guys about my whole college experience, my major is psychology and my goal is to be an elementary guidance counselor and an animal therapist on the side. So I applied to eight universities and I got accepted into all of them, but I feel like the hardest process is committing to a college. I applied to every single college near me because I did not want to leave my dogs or the horses behind. For all the colleges I did apply to, I visited them all in the summer, I think before like my senior year, but there was one one college I didn't visit and it's the college I go to now which I think is so crazy I didn't visit the college I'm going to now because I wasn't even actually planning on attending the reason I knew my school was meant to be is because I was in a situation where I needed to take a child development class and before you commit to a college you should see like the classes that you have to take and I was looking at the classes of all the colleges I was like really into like the my top choices and all of them would make me take a child development class for my master's degree but i'm not getting a master's i want to be done with college after I get my bachelor's like school is just not it once it's more than four years like i want to live my life so i was like that's weird but the college i didn't visit and the college i go to now they had a child development class so that's literally what made me commit because they were the only college that offered that class while me being um a freshman or a sophomore i didn't have to wait until i had my master's degree to take it i was also under a lot of pressure during the commitment process because i just got my senior year taken away from me we got quarantined so it was just a mess but honestly when i committed and i clicked that button it felt so good and it felt right and i honestly do not regret that decision and i'm going to tell you guys why because i love my college so much so because my first year of college was online, I was super scared because not only did I come from a high school that went from kindergarten to high school, I have never been a new student before. I don't know what it's like to be a new student. Like I grew up with the same people, the same friends. When I went to orientation, my anxiety literally left my body because they answered all the questions I had. And I met these two girls, shout out to Nina and Madeline, who helped me like with everything they helped me with financial aid to buy textbooks and we met this friend named sean he's also a psychology major and we made a group chat to help each other through our first year they were just super helpful and it was so nice that only on my first day of orientation i started to make a few friends i really needed that from that day at orientation to right now the experience just kept getting better i also go to the same college as lauren and eugene as you see my videos my two best friends so they just made everything better because i knew i wasn't alone i am not exaggerating when I say that the professors I've had for fall and spring were some of the most nice and respectful adults I have ever had in my life. I've had some pretty amazing high school teachers, but these professors were like another breed. I feel like high school's attitude towards college is really toxic because I think they build fear in, fear in us, or maybe that's just mine. My high school's always like, oh, your professors are not going to care about you. They get paid whether you pass or fail. You're going to get a lot of assignments. They're not going to accept late work. Like, it was just so negative. I never had heard my high school say anything positive about going to college. But let me tell you guys, from my experience, from my college, all of that was false but i'm only speaking from my college experience i don't know about you guys i don't know if it's maybe because i'm just a straight a student and i just like have the drive to go to school and like get motivated but i feel like college was so easy like i don't know if it's maybe because it's just my first year or my college just my college in general like but it was actually so easy i'm gonna talk about the methods i use too to help you guys high school made it seem like that you'll have no free time and you'll be like working forever but after this year and it's only my first year though but i feel like college is the best years of your life because how am i this happy on my first year of college online i have never felt this positive about a school experience ever i think the main key though is time management skills because once you get that skill you can have all the free time in the world and just enjoy your time rather than just studying textbooks all day because we're so used to high school going to school every single day same classes every single day ending at like three o'clock every single day 
you don't have that much free time but in college it's different because you could have like four classes on monday wednesday and friday and one class on tuesday and thursdays and after that you have the whole day to yourself or just the whole week to relax because you don't have the same schedule every single day it honestly took so long for me to get used to hanging out with my friends after classes because it felt so wrong because i felt like i had so much work to do but it was because i was good at time management got all my work done my classes ended at like 12 p.m and i just had the rest of the day to myself and but it felt so weird the one thing I didn't like about college at first was it being online. One of my favorite classes, my Spanish class, made us turn our cameras on, but then later on we found out that professors are actually not allowed to force students to turn their cameras on, and after that I turned my camera off for the rest of the semester, and none of my professors actually required us to have our cameras on, so that was great. I think quarantine really taught me a lesson because I used to feel so bad for homeschooled students, and I still do feel bad because they don't have like social interaction as much as they would if they went to like an actual physical school. But after quarantine, I realized I love it so much. The time you spend driving to school and coming home, all of that time, if you're online, you could use that for working on schoolwork, getting it out of the way, and having the rest of the day to yourself. Like, actually going to school in person takes up a lot of time. That's why I think I loved online school so much, because of the free time was, like, incredible. Because I'm not a procrastinator, as soon as my last class would end, I would pull out all my schoolwork and do it all, and I would just have the rest of the time to relax. And I feel like with online school too, you can work at your own pace. But yeah, the one thing I hated was being stuck inside because I'm an outgoing person. I was getting tired of doing schoolwork in my room, the place I usually relax in. So that sucked. I got so attached to online school that I'm actually scared to go back in person, which I'll explain later. Another thing I hate about college, kind of, is gen ed classes. I think gen ed should only be for people who are undecided majors. If we chose a major, we already know what we want to do. I mean, yeah, you can change your mind, but I know I'm not going to change my mind because I chose a major I'm passionate about. So I feel like gen ed classes should only be given to people who don't know what they want to do yet so they can explore all these different classes, see what they like. But for us who already know what we can do, what we want to do, we could take all these other classes that pertain to our major and probably even finish school early. Like, we pay a lot of money just to have gen ed classes that we took in high school. That's the one thing I don't like. Overall, my fall semester, I had, like, smooth sailing. It was so easy. I love my class and my professors. Another thing I didn't like about my college, but it changed around, was my math class. But the thing I love is... Because I'm a psychology major, I'm only required to take one gen ed math class, and I hate math. Like, in elementary, it would get me to the point I would be crying. Like, math has- math and I don't get along. My math class ended up really good because I ended up with the coolest professor. Overall, she was, like, super organized. She was really nice. But the one thing that stood out about the professor is before every test, she had office hours. It's where you could get all your unanswered questions answered. And, like, if you had any, um, like, math problems on the study guide, she'll go over them. She held them from 7 to 8. And it was just a nice time where we all got to like get together and study for the test. I've always struggled with math and that was a college algebra and trigonometry class. So having that nice professor in those office hours was such nice closure to like my childhood and middle school and high school struggling through all those classes because she really helped me out. The best thing about office hours is it was a group of students. It wasn't just like tutoring because honestly, I personally don't like tutoring because it's awkward. It's one on one. If I'm struggling, I'm like scared to ask more questions because I feel dumb. <laughs> but office hours it was a bunch of us asking questions and like we felt comfortable because we were all struggling that's why we were there so it was nice that it wasn't just an awkward one-on-one -on -one session another thing i didn't like but turned around all these positive experiences i had one in-person class and i was so excited but it was a night class and because i scheduled classes late because i was i was a confused freshman i ended up with a night class and it was a psychology class it was intro to psych i had to take it so I was scared because I hate driving at night. I've never actually been to my campus before because I never visited it. So I was just like super amped up. <laughs> I was so scared. Also not a night owl. I'm a morning person and the class was two hours long. I was like, how am I gonna survive this class? But again, I ended up loving it. The professor, she was so funny and she had like this energy where even though it was a night class and we were tired, she kept us awake. Like she was a really engaging professor. It was also nice having that class because even though I never actually fully got a tour of my college, 
I got to know what it was like to be in a class before my actual first day of school. So it was a really good experience to have. The class ended up being online though because people on campus were getting COVID. Besides those two classes that did turn around though, I loved my fall semester. But spring semester is where it got rough. But again, my professors were amazing. My classes were amazing. The workload wasn't bad, but I started to experience something that I've never experienced before. And I think it started when I had my wisdom teeth surgery because during my recovery time, I was relaxing. Fall semester ended, I was on the couch, I was watching movies, I was healing. And I guess because I had my surgery near the start of the semester, I never got back into work mode. So when I was um, in college during spring, I was like motivated, I was grinding, I was doing everything I usually do. But towards the end, I was like losing a lot of energy and motivation. So I reached out to one of the counselors on campus and I was talking to her and she told me that it was called burnout. And I was like, oh my God, that is what it is. I feel burnt out. Cause in fall, I would wake up at 6.50 in the morning. I would get dressed, I would eat. I would just have this whole morning routine that you saw in the beginning of this video. That's how I usually wake up. But towards springtime, like towards the end or like middle of it, like maybe like February or March, I was like not even able to get out of bed. Like I was so unmotivated that my computer would be in bed with me, just like usually how everyone else was doing it. I was at a desk grinding, but this was just so different now. Another thing that was killing me was the weather was getting nicer. It was coming spring and it was so pretty. It was so nice outside, but I'm here stuck inside doing all this like online work. And then the stables, I couldn't go there. And the stables is like my outlet, my therapy. And I didn't go there because COVID cases were rising. So I was like, you know what? Let me wait until the cases go down and I get my shot and I'll go back to the stables. So I didn't have that outlet. So I was also just super depressed because I was stuck inside doing all the schoolwork. I was losing motivation. I couldn't see the horses. It was just a mess. And to be honest, it never got better until today when my classes ended. Like I never actually gained my motivation up. But when I spoke to that college counselor, she was so cool i loved her like when i'm back in college i'm definitely recommending her to everyone because she really helped if you're watching this and you're a psychology major just like me i think it's so important to trust the services that we're going to go into like i want to be a therapist for um children in school so i was like i don't know why it took me so long to go to a counselor because it was so great and she helped me find a therapist and now i am like living my best life it feels so good to talk to someone and now quarantine's ending and it's like I have this whole summer to like get back to myself and motivated and talk to somebody and it's just it's the best thing even though I did experience burnout at the end of the semester and I was putting in my best work like I got on the dean's list in my fall semester and I'm going to get on the dean's list in spring because I got like really high grades but I wasn't actually putting in my best work because I was so burnt out and like low, like my mental health was just so bad. But I'm so proud of myself for just like pushing through and talking to somebody about it. Anyway, so now that we've talked about my college experience, I wanted to do that so you guys would get some input on how mine went so you can be a little bit positive about how yours went. So here's some of my advice. I have 14 tips for you guys to help you guys out, but number one is the most important. The rest of these aren't in any particular order, but one, your mental health is the most important. Like, yes, you have assignments and you have all this stuff to do, but there were times when I, where I would have so much work, I would drop all my stuff, get in my car and go to the stables and just like relax and pet them and just chill because... I feel like I had so much work and it's like I can't put my best work if I'm just like in my head all the time and like I'm stuck inside so I would go to the stables and then I would come back because I was like you know what my mental health matters before these assignments you need a break and you can't take care of anybody else or do anything um like productive unless you care about yourself first my philosophy professor taught me that number two do not procrastinate I call myself a reverse procrastinator because I think what you should do is the day an assignment is assigned I do it and I finish it, I submit it, and I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the whole assignment because I don't have to look back on it. I think you guys should do that because once you do that, you can just relax because you finished everything. Number three, have a routine. Before the burnout that I experienced towards like the end of spring semester, I had a routine and it was the routine that was in the beginning of this video. I feel like it gets me in the mindset of like, okay, I'm going to school, especially because we're not actually driving to school. I feel like the drive to school or the bus ride to school got me into the mindset of like okay i'm going to school now like i gotta wake up but having a routine i feel like that helped for me maybe it can help for you too number four stay organized i feel like once i'm organized i can just sit and like get in the mode because everything's clean everything's organized i have everything in front of me that i can just get to work i'm going to show you guys my planner and my google drive because those are the two things that i feel like 
they were the only things I could really organize. I mean, I had folders, but everything was online. There was no papers to organize or whatever. So I'm gonna show you guys my computer because maybe that can help you guys organize your stuff. Number five, I don't hear this one a lot, but don't write your notes. The only classes that you should be handwriting notes, I feel like are the ones that you should be. Like Spanish, you learn better when you're writing. Or math, because you can't really type numbers. You know what I mean? But for the rest of them, type your notes it's so much easier it's so much quicker when i was in my psychology class in person i saw a lot of kids writing and they couldn't keep up because not the prof not that the professor was talking too fast like she would slow down if we needed to but typing is just so much faster there's no point of writing like your hands cramping you got all these copy books i love everything on my computer number six go to tutoring if you need it go to tutoring if you're struggling i personally hate tutoring but i'll go if i need to but i prefer office hours because the professor is the one teaching it themselves not like a random tutor who took the class before i struggled so much in that math class and i ended it with a 98 because i went to office hours if i would have stayed silent and struggling i i would not have done well sometimes you just gotta like ask for help especially if you need it you do not want to fail and retake the class for my school when we went to tutoring it would notify the teacher that you went and when i went to office hours my teacher would obviously see me because i went to every single one so when you do all that stuff it actually really works out in your benefit not only for your grade but the professor knows that you care about your grade enough to go to tutoring and get that extra help so you are not only building a bond but they know that okay when i'm grading their test they care about their grade like maybe i'll go easier on them because they showed up to office hours and put in the work most coolest thing about tutoring it's free your i mean your college should be offering it for free i don't think it's not free for me it's free but it's free use it use it as much as you want take advantage of it and if you don't like tutoring do what i did just contact your professor and be like can you do office hours like i need your help on something and from that day forward my teacher did it every week number seven you might not agree with this one this one's just my personal preference but don't take honor classes you can if you really want to knock yourself out this is just my preference c's get degrees i don't aim for c's i aim for straight a's but if i get a b i'm not the kind of student who just like like gets upset at like a b like i'm happy i'm just like a b and up that's perfectly fine for me even if i get a c sometimes like i'm not perfect so i would just like aim for any passing grade what a lot of people don't know is when you're in college and you have your degree and you're applying for jobs or you already had your internship they look for your job experience they're not going to look at your report card and see your grades like, in high school your job is to impress colleges and college your job is to impress your future career or your um your job so grades don't matter as much when it comes to you taking all these extra classes in high school i didn't take any ap classes and i ended up with an eighty thousand dollars presidential scholarship to my university so i don't even plan on taking honor classes i do not need to i'm a studious student and i love school but spending all my time doing work that i don't actually need to it's just self brought on stress for me taking ap and honor classes that's not for me i like to enjoy my life like i can't just spend all my time doing school work that's just not for me but if it's for you do it because maybe it'll work out for you maybe like for harder jobs like nursing and engineer i'm not sure but i'm not doing that to myself number eight i do not recommend joining any clubs but this is just my preference so i was in like eight clubs in high school i was in the national honor society i was in the triumph music honor society i was in choir i was president of photography club i was on the dance team i was on sad club it's students against destructive decisions i was on student council plus horseback riding on the weekends like my lessons i had a lot on my plate i enjoyed it all i did not like i loved the, all those clubs i was in but i did all those clubs to stack my resume so i am kind of tired of doing clubs so if you did a lot of clubs in high school if you're feeling burnt out and tired, I would not recommend doing it in college. In college, I'm in one club and it's social behavior science club. It's good for my major, but I'm only doing one club. I'm not doing any more stuff. I personally need a break from being after school all the time. I cannot do more clubs. The one thing I still do though is I volunteer a lot at the stables um, and I also take my lessons there. That, that I would never stop, but clubs are just not it anymore for me number nine make time for friends honestly i should have put this after mental health because this is just as important i survived my first year of college not only because i have an overall like positive mindset but i had my friends with me i wasn't alone lauren and eugene they went to the same high school as me and now we're in the same college so i felt like we could just conquer the year together my best friend lauren god bless her she was in two of my classes she was in my english class and my psychology class and we were such a dream team when it came to schoolwork 
we would FaceTime each other. I feel like when you call your friends, you would think you'd be distracted. But we would FaceTime each other and we would grind. Like we would work on our schoolwork, finish that. And afterwards we would be like, okay, am I picking you up or are you picking me up? Cause we're gonna hang out. I needed her because I felt like I was so unmotivated towards the end of the spring semester that she was like the one pushing me through. And usually it's funny cause I'm the one motivating her, but the roles reverse. I feel like the stereotype is like, when I say I'm a straight A student, I don't want people to think like, oh I'm a nerd now I'm just gonna open my textbooks and study all the time like I have a life and that's what I love because the time management skills I was talking about I it, it's so important to dedicate your time not only just to school that's so unhealthy like I was like to my friends all the every weekend I'm like we need to hang out we gotta hang out not only am I like that all my friends are like that like we all make time for each other which is so great Leah my friend Leah who's two hours away in another university she makes time for us all the time and she's not even here anymore it's so funny because it's like we're so good at making time for each other I love it number 10 I believe you should schedule all your classes back to back to back if you schedule all your classes back to back with like barely a break in between I know that's hard but you get all your classes over and done when you have the rest of the day to yourself. For me, I'm a morning person, so I would schedule my classes from 8 a.m. And then my latest class would be 12 p.m. And I would just relax because I was done my classes. And we're not used to that because in high school, we end at like 3 or 2 or 4 p.m. So it was just so nice having all that time to myself. I think you should do that just so you can have the rest of the day to do homework, hang out with your friends, whatever. But I mean, it might not work out if you're not a morning person. Number 11 <laughs> i recommend using ratemyprofessor.com you will save so many students from getting bad professors if you rate your professors on rate my professor because they can see who to avoid when they're scheduling classes and not only you should rate your bad professors but you should rate your good professors because give them the recognition they deserve for being a good professor and when you write a good review for a good professor the student will know what professors to take before i picked my classes before i'd made my schedule i would go and rate my professor and look at all the professors to know who to avoid and who to choose that's how i ended up with a really positive college experience because i had some of the most beautiful kindness sweet professors like i could go on and on about my professors but that's because i did my research before i picked them number 12 do not buy your textbooks from the bookstore do not do that you're wasting money i buy all my textbooks from amazon and if i can't find them any cheaper alternative then i use the bookstore but you could save so much money just from getting your textbooks from amazon only use the bookstore if you just if you can't find it anywhere else also speaking of which i need to return my textbook maybe i'll film that number 13 i recommend buying a desk for your room you can find really cheap ones too i've got mine from ikea it is so bad to do school in your bed and i would know because when i experienced burnout i couldn't even leave my bed it was so bad but being in a desk i felt like got me in the mindset of like work mode you know what i mean another thing that kind of correlates to this is i feel like when you have a clean room or maybe this is just me i can't do any work if my room's messy i have to have a clean room because if it's messy i feel like i have to clean it like bothers me you know what i mean i don't know if that's just me let me know and last but not least number 14 for the sake of our eyeballs now that we all know get blue light glasses or blue light screen protectors for your phone and your computer. Another subsection around this I think you should get is those things that like um, go on top of your camera and you open and slide it. I'm gonna, I'll show you mine, but not only are you protecting yourself from the FBI, but just in case you accidentally turn your camera on in class, if fall semester's not in person, you're protected. Having my first year of college online was perfect because it was like a slow introduction to what college is like before I'm actually on campus experiencing the real deal. Like it was a really cool transition and I'm so grateful for that because I feel like on my first day of school, I would have been panicking because I'm an outgoing person, but I never knew what it was like to be a new student or in a new campus because I never experienced that before. Now I feel like I'm prepared because now I have a few friends that I can see on campus. I know my professors that I can say hi to in the hallways and now I get the gist of like how college is at my college not only that but i realized that when my senior year got taken away i was like why is my freshman year being taken away but because a pandemic made me grow i realized your first year of college doesn't actually matter because my heart goes out to all the juniors and seniors who needed internships and jobs and the pandemic happened and they're graduating and i don't even know if they have that lined up I'm like, wow, I'm grateful it was at least my freshman year. That's nothing. Like your senior year and your junior year kind of has to be in person. You need all those um, work experience to get out there and have like all your resume stuff stacked up. Like I was so, my heart went out to them and I hope 
they're like doing great so you know how i mentioned earlier how i was so attached to online school that i'm scared to go back i'm scared to go back because of how much free time i have right now i am so relaxed even when i had burnout i still had time to like play with my dogs and hang out with my friends and they would help me get through stuff i had time to see the counselor and we would talk like it was so great and i'm gonna miss that because maybe i'll still have the same free time like my schedule i'll show you for my next semester it's still the same but i don't know maybe the time from driving back and forth coming home having to eat do homework you're taking a shower you're getting a lot of time wasted to do homework it's like i don't know if i can do it and i have that club now too so maybe we'll be meeting in person that's just it's a lot anyway now i'm going to delete all my reminders on my reminder app of all the, <laughs> the school assignments I have to do i'm gonna delete all my alarm apps i'm gonna return my textbooks i have to rate my professors i'll rate my professor and i'm gonna hang out with my best friends today stay tuned because now it's summer we got a whole summer to make videos and if you guys want when school season comes along i can do a few school season related videos like what's in my school bag or i can do um how to get ready like with school supplies i can show you guys all that don't forget to like subscribe share and leave comments everywhere have a blessed day and have a blessed summer you want some fruit It's summer, baby.